In this short video, I'm going to go through one of my favorite bits of physics, which is how you estimate the equilibrium temperature of planets, uh, making use of black body, or making use of what we know about black body radiation. Um, so consider the equation um, the, for the luminosity of a black body. Remember this is, um, for example, for the sun, this is that the luminosity of the sun is 4 pi the radius of the sun squared. So it's just the area, the surface area of a spherical sun, uh, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and then the surface temperature of the sun to the fourth power. Now let's consider an object um, that's a distance d from the sun. The flux um, that that object is going to intercept is just going to be the luminosity of the sun divided by 4 pi uh, d squared. Um, so that's then if we put in uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law, that's going to be um, the radius of the sun squared sigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the sun to the fourth power, divided by uh, d squared. The 4 pi is uh, cancelled. <coughs> Let's say this is a planet, a spherical planet, with a radius uh, rp. It's going to have a cross-section area of pi rp squared. Um, so the energy that it's going to absorb per unit time, absorb energy, um, it's just going to be um, its cross-sectional area times the flux from the sun. Um, so if we put that all uh, in together, it's going to be uh, pi rp squared radius of the sun squared, stigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the sun to the fourth power divided by distance squared. Um, now there's a little complication here, um, which is something called albedo. Um, this is basically uh, the fraction of the light that's reflected. So the fraction of light reflected, uh, and it gets, uh, the letter A tends to be used, sometimes little a, sometimes capital A, sometimes alpha. Um, for example, um, the albedo of the Earth, so I'll use this little x thing to say it's the Earth, is 0.4. So 40% of the light that falls on the Earth is reflected by clouds. Um, the most extreme albedo in the solar system is Venus, uh, and that's 7.76. Um, and the least extreme one, or the planet that absorbs the most, is Mercury. And this has an albedo of 0.06, so only 6% of the light that falls onto Mercury is, is reflected. Okay, um, so the power absorbed by the planet, we have to account for this albedo, actually is going to be... Uh, use W for this, for, for watts, I guess, for power absorbed. Radius of the sun squared, sigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the sun to the fourth power, divided by d squared, area of the planet, cross-sectional area of the planet, and then it's one minus the albedo, because this is the absorbed stuff. Okay, so now if we're in an equilibrium situation, this uh, absorbed power has to equal the output power. And the, the planet is just going to act like a black body as well. So the luminosity of the planet, because it's a black body, is just going to be 4 pi, radius of the planet squared, stigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the planet to the fourth power. In equilibrium, we can set this equal uh, to the power absorbed by the planet, <clears throat> which means that we have this equation, radius squared of the sun, Sigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the sun to the fourth power, divided by d squared, pi times the radius of the planet squared, to one minus the albedo, it's four pi rp, sigma Stefan Boltzmann, temperature of the planet to the fourth power. So lots of things cancel, right? So we can get rid of Stefan Boltzmann constant, we can get rid of pi, we can get rid of the radius of the planet squared. Oh, I missed the squared over there. Um, <clears throat> which I think is the really neat thing about the physics, that the radius of the object does not matter. Um, and then if we uh, make this all a little bit neater, we'll write it on the next 
slide here, we end up with this equation for the temperature of a planet. It's going to be the radius of the sun uh, divided by the distance between the sun and the planet, uh, the square root of that, and then it's 1 minus the albedo over 4 the quarter root times the temperature of the sun. So if you put in reasonable numbers, um, you can end up with, for example, the equilibrium temperature of the Earth uh, being around about 279 Kelvin, 1 minus the albedo to the quarter power. Um, so if you just assume it absorbs everything, you know, this is going to be 279 Kelvin, which is a bit hot. If you put in a, a reasonable albedo, you'll find a number that's a bit cold, actually, um, because uh, the clouds on the Earth retain some heat. Um, obviously, you can also uh, make use of this to figure out the peak, wa peak wavelength um, that is emitted by planets or by any object. Remember, this is 2.9 centimeters over the temperature of a planet in Kelvin. Um, this is going to tell you that most planets emit in the infrared. Um, one other little uh, subtlety or a little addition we can make is if the planet's not rotating. Um, uh, for example, in the case of Mercury, um, if the planet's not rotating and it doesn't have a lot of cloud curve, it doesn't have a lot of winds, you're not going to reach an equilibrium temperature. So the solar side, the sun-facing side of Mercury is much hotter than the, um, the uh, nighttime side of Mercury. Um, so remember, Stefan Boltzmann, the luminosity is proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So if there's a big difference in temperature, the bulk of the luminosity is going to come from the hot side. And so when a planet's not rotating, we just assume that the area that's emitting black body radiation, instead of being 4 pi uh, rp squared, the area of a sphere, ends up we, we end up instead estimating it, it's an estimate rate, um, to just be uh, pi rp squared. So think of it as like the cross-sectional area of the bit that's facing towards the sun, the, the hot bit, basically. Um, and there's very little difference, actually, if you do that. You end up um, with the, the temperature of a planet that's not rotating um, is radius of the sun over d to the one half, uh, and then it's just one minus a. That factor of four disappears times the temperature of the sun. So not too much difference, uh, but, uh, but a little subtlety that, that you might get asked about. Okay, that's the end of the video on uh, estimating the temperature of planets using blackbody radiation.